Virginia is a game with very mixed reviews on Steam. Some people love it, others absolutely hate it. I decided to give it a try. The good thing about such games is that I go in with extremely low expectations. The bad is that those games usually fail to fulfill even those. Sadly, Virginia is no exception here. First, let me talk about the technical aspects of the game. It's not very demanding in terms of hardware, any average PC should be able to run it without issues. It does allow you to play it in ultra wide, but 32 by 9 seems to have some scaling issues, especially in the menus. It's still okay in game, but the menus just go crazy and some of them just disappear, move all over the place. The writings, you have to click in one place in order to actually be clicking something else, so it's a mess. 21 by 9, on the other hand, works perfectly everywhere, so if you want to play in ultra wide, that would probably be the better choice, although like I've said 32 by 9 works well in game but has many problems. The game has an interesting art style, it's both ugly and appealing. The reason for this is because the character models look like they've come from a PlayStation 1 game. The environments are not nearly as bad but the characters just look terrible in my opinion. The animations are stiff as well. Some people seem to like this art style but I'm a sucker for advanced graphics and this is very far from that. In addition to it, the game has filters which make the screen look really blurry and messy, reminding me of a dream sequence in other games. And for the most part, I assume that this is what will turn out to be the case at some point, which would have explained the visuals, but that simply did not happen. The game's music on the other hand is very good. While playing, I thought that it was amazing, but as I was listening to it after the fact, I came to realize that this impression was mostly created due to the fact that everything else was so mediocre. You see, when you compare something decent to something bad, the decent thing seems much nicer than it actually is. Still, the music was very nice and I've enjoyed it, so let's not bash it for that, but you know, I don't want to overhype it either. Shortly after I started the game, I realized that it is entirely possible to play it with just one hand. All you need is the mouse. You can hold the right mouse button to move forward, press the left one to interact with things, and that's it. Most of you will probably understand why this is a red flag. The game calls itself a thriller, so that would put it in the same category as games such as L.A. Noir. Let me tell you why this is patently absurd. First of all, Virginia has no gameplay whatsoever. People have called it a walking simulator, but I'd argue that even that description is way too optimistic. In a walking simulator, you actually have very beautiful environments which you are expected to discover. The environments here could hardly be any more minimalistic. Not only that, but the game often gives you no time to look at things even if you wanted to. You can't interact with anything except the one object, person or door within the scene which was required from the game at that point. Sometimes you don't even get to interact with anything, you just sit there wondering what the game wants and suddenly a hard cut happens and a different scene is being played. I found these moments to be most annoying because it felt like I was being forced to stand and do nothing just so the game doesn't feel extremely short. Another way this is achieved is by forcing you to walk slowly through the whole experience. I would understand when that's the case, whenever the plot demands it, but there are times when running feels like the correct thing to do, a much more appropriate thing to do considering the scene you're in, yet the game still holds you back and you walk. I've been calling it a game out of habit, but let me make this very clear. Virginia is not a game. It fails to fulfill the most basic requirements for that and sadly its problems aren't just with the lack of gameplay. Let's talk about the story. With no gameplay you'd expect a story which is strong and can carry the player on its back, but you'd again be wrong. I know I was. For the whole two and a half hours which it took me to complete it, I was just waiting for it to become interesting. Not only was it boring for the most part, it felt like its creators realized that and decided to add a whole bunch of nonsense at the end, resulting in a confusing mess. Clearly whoever wrote the script was drunk or just really confused, but hey, they did not forget to sprinkle some SJW nonsense on it, because as you know, every game has to now feature homosexuals, minorities and all the other SJW tropes you can imagine. What infuriates me so much is the fact that the sexuality of the characters is implied and demonstrated on several occasions for no reason whatsoever. It does not contribute to the story in any significant way and I can't imagine anyone watching this with boredom and thinking, boy, I sure wonder what the sexuality of these characters is. 
Every industry is being poisoned by this nonsense and I am becoming allergic to it. Allow me to digress a bit. In order to explain my issue since I was once asked about it in the comment section of one of my videos, a perfect example for this is an exclusive game for the PlayStation 4, actually no, it was for the PlayStation 3 at first, called The Last of Us. If you have never played or heard of it, it's about a post-apocalyptic world where a fungal virus has killed off most of the population and made them into, well, zombies. One young girl, Ellie, is bitten but seems to be immune. So a man named Joel is tasked with getting her to a special camp where her immunity is to be investigated. There's a bit more behind it but I'm giving you a very abridged version of it. I don't want to get into too many details but at one point you meet a rather rednecky looking guy who turns out to be gay. This is warranted from a narrative standpoint because it serves to shock the player. Since the guy is very ungay in his appearance and behavior and it is a bit of a surprise when you find out that his loved one who was killed by zombies was also male. You sympathize with his loss and it serves to humanize him in your eyes. He suffers in his own way and even though there is a zombie apocalypse going on, he feels uncomfortable telling people about his homosexuality. This is an example of how it was done well. The scene really works and makes you think. Even though there's an apocalypse, this guy is still not comfortable in his skin enough to tell everyone. Perhaps even more so because of the apocalypse, people have turned back and behave more like savages than ever. But what's curious is, is that the same game also does the exact opposite in its DLC where it shows us how the young girl Ellie got bitten in the first place. It also goes very far to show us that she's actually lesbian by placing her in a scene where she makes out with a black girl. This serves absolutely no purpose but to please the SJW overlords, for whom it's super important to see a teenage interracial couple make out. It has no narrative value whatsoever. So as you can see we have an example of the same game doing it once the right way and it serves the narrative and do it once very poorly and basically just to appease the SJWs. And that is the kind of behavior I don't approve of. The first example I'm absolutely cool with. On the contrary, I found it to be very good and very interesting and it somehow developed this world even further in my eyes. It gave me a feeling of what's going on. It made it look more real. Whereas the second one was just, hey guys, you know, I know you're all politically correct uh, snowflakes and we want to give you this. This is good. Look how, look how advanced we are. Look how we're progressive. And this is something that I absolutely despise. I would really love it if political statements of this kind, well, preferably of any kind, but especially of this kind, are left out of the game because nobody really cares what the sexuality of Pixels is. I remember things like Soldier 76 and Overwatch being declared gay now. Who cares? There's no point at which, you know, I, it would be somewhat hilarious if he was declared gay and then it turned out he was, you know, in a couple with another character and they could work upon this, you know, this would make a little bit of sense. But, but what we have is just them coming and saying, hey guys, this guy's gay. Did you know that? Nobody cares? Oh well, we told you anyway. So anyway, I'm, I want to move on because this infuriates me too much. So. You see my point, it completely kills my immersion when I realize that I am witnessing some of this propaganda about political correctness while playing a genuinely great game. And now I'm going back to Virginia, which is not a great game, and here the situation is even worse because I'm neither really playing nor is the experience particularly good. To make things worse, there is no voice acting whatsoever. Most of what is happening is made in such a way that it's clear, but the more you progress, the more you'll be focused and confused. You will try to understand, but many things are not explained. We are an FBI agent who is assigned a partner and sent to investigate the disappearance of a young boy. However, this is not our main task. We are to observe our agent, colleague, and report any unusual activities from her. Since an internal investigation against her is taking place and we're kind of in there to gather proof against her. And even that simple plot soon becomes confusing due to the game's weird and chaotic presentation. More things get mixed in and since there is not even any voice acting, it all becomes a blur by the end. What I can tell you is that our character acts like an idiot and constantly carries the file on which her assignment can be seen and even drops it a few times causing her partner to notice it at some point. And again, this, is, this has been like absolutely obvious to happen because she dropped it several times where she didn't notice it and in the end she did notice it. Nobody in their right mind would carry that folder with them while spying on their partner. 
literally in the folder there's a picture of the partner and it says like internal investigation and whatnot it's it's the whole thing you shouldn't be carrying why would you even carry this there is no necessity for this for your undercover mission to have it i could honestly rant about this game for much longer but if i did i might as well claim that this review that you're watching right now of me talking is a video game since it has no gameplay has a bad plot and is super short <laughs> but uh, should you spend the 10 bucks on this game and by the way you can't see me but i'm making sarcastic quotation marks with my fingers while calling it a game no you should not if you are curious just watch a youtube video of it honestly there's no difference between watching a playthrough and actually playing it yourself if anything it will be more convenient because you don't have to use one hand to advance the plot leaving you with two free hands rather than with just one. You could eat something while watching it and getting bored. That's something that you could do and it's free on a video. This is where I thank you for watching my video. Oh yeah, and I wanted to also remind you that I now have a Patreon account. The link which can be found in the description leads to that account. So feel free to check it out. And uh, besides that, may I direct your attention to my other videos. Some of them are good, I promise. In any case, thanks for watching and have a great day.